I want to recup- recuperate some of what I've already said uh, from chapter 19 uh, and then move on uh, to get to the end of the trial before Pilate uh, and then move on from there to the crucifixion. So he handed him over, see, to have him scourged. What he expected to accomplish by that, I don't know. That is a very cruel. The prisoner was tied in a bent over position against a pillar, and then they hit him as hard as they wanted. Now, if the soldiers, Syrian, probably mercenaries, think that he's really an insurrectionist, that means he's killing the soldiers. Well, they want to take it out on him. So they do. And uh, then they struck him repeatedly, put a purple cloak, and so he came out in a mockery, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. Mockery. There is the, the creator of the world, the king of the universe, and he's accepting to be mocked like this. You see? So Jesus, Pilate says, Behold the man. Behold Adam and what he's done to himself. And the one who has done none of this to himself or to anybody else is the one taking his punishment. And standing there, you know, with a, with a mockery crown and a mockery royal robe. And um, he says to them, Behold the man. Here he is. And when the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. Look at there. He didn't make himself the Son of God. He has been Son of God from all eternity. He created them. And now they're mocking him like this. Huh? Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium. You notice the comings and goings of Pilate, the man of the world. He cannot make up his mind. Where am I safer? Condemning him or letting him go? You see? Justice or safety? You see? So he's going in and going out. And so he went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Uh, and um, John 8, we already have Jesus. I know where I have come from, where I am going. But you don't know. Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? He didn't answer him. Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed you over to me has the greater guilt. Now he's scared. So he brings him out. He's hoping to see him mocked and covered with wounds, what might move them. And they say, if you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar, is a technical term. Um, They got contacts in Rome. He doesn't do what they want. They can tell Caesar, and they'll tell it in a way in the worst light possible, of course. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When he heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in a in the place called uh, uh, in, in Hebrew Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for the Passover. It was about noon, getting close to the time when sun set and uh, slaughtering the Passover lamb. And he says, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. And here comes the great sin. Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. What about God? They're going that far now. Then he handed them over to be crucified. So now we're moving on. 
So they took Jesus and carrying the cross for himself. No matter how beaten he was, he's carrying his own cross. So what is he carrying? The cross beam. The uh, upright beam, big block of wood like this, six, eight feet high, is already in the ground. The prisoner carried the cross piece. And then they nail him to the cross piece, lift him up, and then nail his feet to the to the other one. And the prisoner dies of asphyxiation. That is, he has to hold himself up on his feet or the pressure will constrict his diaphragm and he won't be able to breathe. So instinct, no matter how much it hurts his feet, he has to lift himself up or he'll run out of breath, which is significant in one more than one way. Because, um, you see, uh, Jesus, um, with, with a loud cry, died. That is, he wasn't asphyxiated. Uh, now, there's this famous, see, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes. Salvation of the world. Many of the Jews read this notice because but the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. Nearly all crucifixions are just outside the city gate so that people can see what this man is going through. And the Romans say, you see, don't cross us. That's what happens to you. So they do it to inspire fear in everybody else. You try plotting a little plot against us, we'll get you. And this is what we'll do you. And so they're afraid. Now it says it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The king of the Jews. Huh? Universal. Hebrew, Latin, Greek. The chief priests of the Jews said, don't write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. And then, what I have written, I have written, which means it stays written. That's who he is, in my judgment. And then the soldiers took his garments and made four portions. And then they took the tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven from the top in one piece. That's a difficult thing to do. Who wove that for him? Was it Mary? This is a seamless tunic. If you know anything about weaving, that's very hard to do. So they said to one another, let's not tear it. Let's toss for it to see whose it will be, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And you know the scripture. It comes from Psalm 22. They divided my garments among themselves, and for my clothing they cast light, lot, cast lots. That is just what the soldiers did. And then we have all, the, I can only read a few patristic uh, texts here. Um, uh, I could write a writer, I could read a couple more maybe. Um, is, here's Justin. It is Jesus Christ who stretched out his hands when he was crucified but by his Jewish opponents, stretched out his hands to gather them together. He bore on his shoulders the symbol of victory. This cross is victory. And then we have Aquinas. Christ carries his cross like a king. He carries his scepter as a sign of that glory which is his universal domination from all things. And then this text from Psalm 95, the Lord will reign, and somebody added Alinho from the wood. It's not part of the psalm, but in the Middle Ages they thought it was. And the government is upon his shoulders from Isaiah. You see how they read these things? The faith they have? And he carries his cross like a trophy. Carries a, a victor carries a trophy of his victory. Or like a teacher carries a candlestick in which to put the light of his teaching. Because the word of the cross is for believers the power of God. And then some say, go back to this text, and it's already 
interpreted this way by Genesis Rabbah, which is a rabbinic document. Abraham took the wood of the Holocaust and laid it on the shoulders of his son Isaac. And the commentary, like the one who carries his cross on his shoulder. Uh, and then uh, Origen, one of the great fathers of the church, the carrying of the wood for the Holocaust by Isaac is an image of Christ who carried the cross himself. Okay? And so, uh, this, uh, and then the high priest robe. Uh, there's something going on here. Why? Let's not split this robe. Let's not divide this robe. Huh? So, there's a quote from Josephus, the church historian. Now, this vesture was not composed of two pieces. This is the high priest's robe. Nor was it sewn together upon the shoulders and the sides, but was one long vestment, so woven as to have an aperture for the neck, not an oblique one, but one parted along the breast and on the back. We can put it on. So this vesture that Jesus is wearing is a high priest vesture. He's fulfilling the whole sacrificial system. Uh, and so it becomes the unity of the church. Don't tear this robe of Christ. It's the church. And so, um, here's St. Cyprian. The sacrament of unity, the bond of invisible, indivisible unity is made president of the church. The garment of our Lord Jesus Christ was not divided nor turned, torn. Rather, they drew lots to see who could put on Christ. The robe must be received in its entirety intact. It must be kept as a personal. That's the unity of the church. Don't tear the unity of the church. It is the robe of Christ. Whether it be unity in the family, unity in a community, or unity between East and West and Protestant and Catholic, these are all wrong. They are tearing the seamless garment of Christ. One cannot keep the robe of Christ if one comes to tear apart and divide the church of Christ. Okay. And of course, you know that comes from the psalm. Uh, and so we have here now this uh, vision of the uh, church and of Christ. Uh, all of this, these mystics see in what is in itself a degrading and horrible way to die. But Jesus, by his dignity as a divine person, but by the depth of his love, changes this into the sign of salvation. And so this degrading death uh, becomes the sign of salvation. 